Aloha, this is Guy Pancho with the Weekly Paley Report. Uh, this one is for August 22nd of 2013. I'm driving through the park here. I'm sorry to be a day late with this report, but I really wanted to get these redwood trees in the report today, so I'm a day late. I want to say that this is a very important and powerful time of change. <laughs> I'll tell you, the aspects for this weekend are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we've got so much going on. I have to give you a bunch of astrology before I give you the, you know, the full report. Because what's happening, I mean, right now the moon is in Pisces. Tomorrow it goes into Aries. It's going to join with the planet Uranus and create, along with Venus, Jupiter, Pluto, Lilith, a grand cross. This grand cross is extremely yeah, I'm going to talk about it at length, but Venus, you know, we went, went, went into Libra, so we have Venus opposite Uranus, and that's only going to be for like this weekend, it's going to move on, and it's just, you know, joining together with that Jupiter opposite Pluto, which is going on for quite some time, but it's creating this grand cross, and if that was not enough, we also have the Sun joining together with Mercury this whole week. Sun conjunct Mercury. They both go into Virgo and come into an opposition with Neptune. So we have this grand cross in the cardinal signs. Venus, Jupiter, Uranus, Pluto. At the same time that we have the Sun conjunct Mercury opposite Neptune. So. Now what I would normally do after giving all of these astrological you know, I mean I usually stop and give the Pele report somewhere, but I hate to stop driving because this is such an awesome video. <laughs> oh man. I got the camera poised right on the dashboard. This is such a wonderful time. I just want to say, I, it's interesting because there's a number of different ways that you can interpret, you know, this T-square with Jupiter, Pluto, Uranus, and now the Grand Cross with Venus. You know, different astrologers will give you different interpretations about how to handle this tremendous influx of energy. This is a time period, if you think about it, and a lot of the old astrology books will say, oh, Venus square Jupiter. Look out. You know, it is too tempting to become self-indulgent. Jupiter makes everything bigger and grander and more abundant. Squaring Venus, the square can bring in too much, too much love too much joy, too much happiness, too much relationship and partnership. And I'm going to have to say that's the old paradigm, that's the old astrology, and I'm just not going to go there. I want to tell you some more stuff coming up here. Okay, well, I found a nice spot here to finish the report, but I did want to give you a little more astrology. And... Because we have to look at this Venus closely. It was really the middle of January of 2013 that Venus came into a conjunction with Pluto. And then in the end of March, she came around, separated, had that first quarter square from Pluto and came into a conjunction with Uranus. And then 
came around to Jupiter. So we have to look at the whole cycle of Venus, you know, to see how she is operating and functioning in this grand cross that's going on. So I just really wanted to bring that up. I'm out here at Patrick's Point. It's a very beautiful spot, so I'd like to set up the camera, give you guys a little shot of the coastline here. All right, well, I hope this is good. I hope I've got a good spot here. I wanna get to this report. Woo! It's been so hard, this moon in Pisces. <laughs> I just wanna relax and kick back and take it easy and let go. Woo! I'm sure it'll change tomorrow, Friday, when the moon goes into Aries, joins together with this Uranus, and we start really cooking along. But when I, when I think about this grand cross, Pluto, Uranus, Lilith, Jupiter, Venus over here. So what I say is, yeah, last January, Venus up at Pluto, then comes around late March, She's over here on Uranus. Three months later, yeah, June, she's down here with Jupiter. And now she's coming around into Libra. This is the cycle of Venus, Aphrodite. She is the ruler of Libra. She went into Libra and she's gonna be powerful here. And this is about love. Last January, the seed was sown. Venus comes around to Pluto in Capricorn. It's about love and it's about resources and it's about money and security and how all of this is connected in our relationships. So January was a time of the end, Venus-Pluto, the end of love as we know it, the end of love the way you used to do it. The end of love, the, the, of the concept of love, of what you thought love was, was time to transform and change. And of course it was square Uranus at that time also. And so this was like Uranus in Aries, I me mean my, my way, I wanna be free, I want space, I, I can't do relationship. So January was this time of what's going on? Should I be alone? Should I be in relationship? Should I be up? Should I be down? What do I want? What do I value? Venus has to do with our values. Maybe also some fluctuations in your financial market, your financial balance, bank balances. And so that was the end of an old paradigm, an old way of being a partner, of being in relationship. Then comes around March. Venus goes into Aries. Last week of March, beginning of April, she's sudden, maybe an un unexpected love, an unexpected new situation, unexpected relationship, unexpected source of income, new ideas, our kind of genius punching through, punching out. And then in June, right around the solstice, she comes around and joins with Jupiter. You remember the Venus-Jupiter conjunction. Openness. So the big picture here, this Jupiter opposite Pluto I talked about before. Now last week I talked about Jupiter square Uranus. It was there a couple days ago, it's still there now. This is all a time of, well, let's move it, let's move to this last. Now, so now we're coming into this grand cross, this weekend. And all I can say is, there is a time and a season for everything. And a divine purpose under heaven. It's an old bird's song. <laughs> it's actually from the Bible. <laughs> but this is a time. Sun, Mercury opposite Neptune. Mars going into Leo. Venus, Jupiter, Uranus, Pluto. 
love, fun, enjoyment, dance, music, letting go, releasing, experimenting, reaching into the unknown, boldly stepping forward. You know, if you did a birth chart this weekend for a new business that was being founded or started, you would look at it and go, whoa, you know, this should be a new uh, Hollywood production company. You know, this is a good chart, you know, for the entertainment industry. This is a good chart for dancing or musicians or, you know, this can be like a worldwide, you know, network or shakeup. Bringing in new ways of loving, of enjoying ourselves, of appreciating the richness and the goodness of relationship, of emotional union and connection. It's really, uh, you know, it, it's really positive for that. And our society, our religious conditioning, the old patriarchy, even the old astrology books is going to say, no, 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 no. Sun, Mercury, opposite Neptune, watch out. Don't get under illusions. Don't lie to yourself. It's not real. It's not true. And, you know, Venus, Jupiter, that can be, you know, diabetes, too sweet, too sugar. Be paranoid. Look out. Stay small. Lay low. Be careful. Don't have too much sugar, don't have too much fun, don't, you know, don't go dance too much. This is, this is what I, you know, my values. New Paradigm Astrology says no. We spend so much time being afraid. We spend so much time being small, being ashamed, being guilty. These old religions and these old archetypes, these old hierarchical laws and rules are trying to suppress our personal joy, our personal power, our powers connected to our joy. When we're happy, we're not, we don't need to follow all those rules and do what they say. I'm fine just like I am. We are all fine just like we are. This is Jupiter in Cancer and it's opposite to that Pluto. You should be something else for everybody else. No, 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 not now, not now. Now is the time. Yeah, this Venus coming around is doing relationship and partnership a new way, doing it differently, and that is to take myself into the equation. Take yourself into the equation of your relationships. Don't do it in the old codependent way. This is a way of really being clear. And Pallas Athena is the co-ruler of Libra. So Venus here, you know, in Libra is very balanced, justice, the goddess of wisdom. So it's communication, it's an air sign. It's experimenting, it's reaching out. So I just want to say, don't feel guilty, don't stay small, don't get paranoid. Actually let yourself go. So the mantra for this week is, the path to joy and happiness is laughing and dancing along. The more I sing, the more I see that life is but a song. Breathe into that. We're not in these bodies for that long, really, in the course of infinite time and reincarnation. You're not this old for that long. You're going to get older. <laughs> Take life in the moment and enjoy it. And this is, these aspects are like, oh yeah, wow.
This kind of week is, doesn't come around very often, man. Have a good time. The path to joy and happiness <laughs> is laughing and dancing along. The more I sing, the more I see that life is but a song. Namaste, aloha, so much love. And if you're late, that's fine. Take it easy on yourself, at least for one week, huh? Just take this week off. Indulge yourself a little bit. You deserve it. <laughs> yeah.